Hi everyone, I want to talk about heart failure diagnosis. Heart failure diagnosis, but this time it's going to be heart failure diagnosis too because I have made a separate presentation on brain natural peptides, anti pro BNP, and entresto effects on brain natural peptides. If you haven't check that out please check heart failure diagnosis one okay let's go still on diagnosis heart failure is mostly diagnosed clinically i said that in my first presentation but for the purpose of accuracy and to be able to monitor the treatment we need to have baseline of all these parameters that i'm about to mention Okay, to rule out myocardial infarction, because myocardial infarction can cause heart failure pretty quickly, then we need to know what is going on with the cardiac enzymes, troponin T, troponin I, CKMB, LDH. We need to rule out anemia because anemia could be the cause, and complete blood count will give us that. Renal pathology, if you listen to my first presentation, how renal failure will affect the level of BNP is out there. Please kindly check out. And with that, we do analysis, blood, urea, nitrogen, kidney, the level of sodium, because high sodium will retain more fluid, and then the trouble with heart failure the more. Potassium, because when you give some of these medications, it's going to send out potassium, some will retain. When we get to the treatment, there will be detailed explanation of that. And of course, calcium and magnesium. As low as the value of magnesium is, if it is extremely low, in fact, we are going to have what you call long QT syndrome that will lead to, to side point, to ventricular tachycardia, and possibly ventricular fibrillation. We need to know what is happening to the liver because part of the clinical signs and symptoms is upper abdominal chondrant pain the right upper chondrant pain which means the liver is affected and when there is massive enlargement of the liver hepatomegaly that's going to be a big problem as well as splenomegaly so we need to know what is going on with the liver by doing pt or inr is the same APTT, bilirubin, albumin, glucose, AST, ALT, GGT. GGT in particular, if it's greater than twice the normal value, then there's problem ongoing. And GGT has a lot of value to diagnosis of heart failure when it is done in conjunction with the value of brain natural peptides or atrial natural peptides or and terminal pro BNP. So if you are confused, because when you listen to my first presentation on diagnosis of heart failure with emphasis on BNP, ANP, and NT pro BNP, you could be confused, but if you listen again, you're going to get it clearer. But then you can just do GGT level. All right? When you match all these parameters together, then you'll be comfortable to say this is heart failure. Then diabetes mellitus, we can do random blood sugar and later on do fasting blood sugar to rule diabetes mellitus out. If you are suspecting infection, don't waste time, do blood culture. If you think this is viral, do viral culture, polymerase chain reaction or enzyme link immunosorbent acid. If this is a polypidemia, do fasting lipid profile, and if you're thinking this is an autoimmune situation, why not teach LA, ANA, rheumatoid factor, antiphospholipid antibodies, antocentrimia, and the rest like that? Radiologically, it is compulsory to have EKG done. With EKG, we'll know whether we're dealing with atrial fibrillation, ventricular tachycardia, or even particular fibrillation that might kill the patient very pretty quickly. Atrial flutter, superior ventricular tachycardia, and the rest of them are sometimes 
you can get non-specific features suggestive of pulmonary embolism on EKG. And the chest x-ray is compulsory because sometimes the dyspnea might not even be related to the heart, might be lung problem. But you are expecting cardiomegaly and heart failure, right? It's not all the time. If it is diastolic dysfunction, like the old nomenclature would say, or heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, the new nomenclature, you are not going to pick cardiomegaly. Okay? Let that be clear. Cardiomegaly is not all the time in heart failure. Somebody with diastolic dysfunction or heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, we have no cardiomegaly. It is apatrophy, and we can pick that with the aid of echo. I'll go into that in a bit. Cardi B lines and pleural effusion. You can get all those on chest X-ray. Echo is very, very essential. Two-dimensional echo, transthoracic echo, and transosophagia. What are we looking for? We are looking for valvular heart defects. We are looking for the most important prognostic factor, which is left ventricular ejection fraction. We want to rule out cardiomyopathy here. I have ventricular Apatrophy also, primarily capillary wedge pressure, cardiac output estimation, and that would determine left ventricular ejection fraction and cardiac tamponant that could be the culprit here or constrictive pericarditis, dilated myocardiopathy or atrial enlargement will all be picked with the aid of ECH. Exercise testing is part of the parameters we can use to make diagnosis. Exercise testing is not for diagnosis at the onset, but that will help us to determine the level of functionality. And with that, we'll be able to rate or stage the heart failure appropriately. And you can also distinguish pulmonary from cardiovascular causes. Whether or not cardiac transplantation will be suggested, you will know more after doing exercise testing. And with that, you might be able to even come down on possible myocardial infarction, angina, or acute coronary syndrome in general. So exercise testing is part of the investigative procedures. But there are a lot of pieces of information that you can use that for. Not for diagnosis per se, but to monitor, determine the staging, rule out pulmonary causes, and make your determination that this individual will need cardiac transplantation or not. And with that, I come to the end of the diagnosis of heart failure. The next presentation will be on prevention. Kindly subscribe so that you can get these publications immediately they are released. Thank you.